Hello dear students. So we are discussing Japan and Brazil through a traveler's eye written by George Mites. So as we all know this is a travel writing. A travel writing where a writer visits certain places and then he writes down about his experiences. So here we have George Mites who has travelled to Japan and Brazil. So here he has written his experience, what he thinks or feels about these two countries. And uh, we discussed about travel writing, how it started, its history and all. Moving on now, we will discuss about his writing. Firstly, he talks about Japanese manners. Now, here in this paragraph, uh, his focus is only on Japanese. What are their manners? How do they behave? So according to him, a quarter of an hour in Japan will convince you that you are among exquisitely well-mannered people. Exquisitely, extremely. He is saying if you spend a quarter of an hour, which means if you send, spend like 15 minutes in Japan, you will realize that the people of Japan are extremely well mannered. in Japan Japan people, Japan is very well mannered people. And they live on a hopelessly overcrowded island. Hopelessly overcrowded. Japan is a very small country, right? Uh, but in that country it is overcrowded. There are many people living in that small island. So there, they have to respect one another's privacy. Would have to if they had any privacy. So what is he saying? It is overcrowded, that place, that country. And it is very small. Yet, they have to respect others' privacy. Ashtu chikka chakra no oppo privacy na oppo respect maat le bhe. But, what happened if they had any privacy? Privacy, respect maat bhe koos ni cha. Or or ye na ko privacy de ta ne. Ya ki de ta ne. Do not they have privacy or do not they respect each other's privacy? Reason, it is a courtesy, it is substitute. Take for example, the little red telephones in the streets, shops, halls, hotels. The instrument is situated on a table or on a counter. They have no space to spare for booths. You conduct your most confidential business transactions, your intimate love patterns in public. So here the point is, since it is a small country, uh, for example, telephone booths. We all know about telephone booths. Telephone booths in general are covered by glasses. So when you get inside and speak, people, uh, those who stand outside, they cannot hear you. Telephone booth that you can hear, that you can hear, that you can hear. That in the area, here in Japan, they do not, do not have booths, separate or glass sheet. They will have open telephones everywhere. Hotel, malls, ella kade, shops, ella kade, booth irala, but open telephones irala. Telephone na aage itil dara. So when the person speaks, the other one can hear him. As to open na ki telephone sitil dara ka. So upro matar itil dara telephone ali, inno ki ka obviously, kere se kere se dara. Um, so, they conduct their intimate love patterns business transactions, everything in public, yet in perfect privacy. Anybody, any passerby could listen in, but nobody does. A man's telephone receiver is his chasm. So, here is a plus point. Japanese people are very well mannered. They respect others' privacy. Though, telephones are kept in open area uh, while the person is speaking uh, the other people they won't listen to him they'll just move on or they'll 
way, but they do not listen to what he is speaking. So, this is the plus point. If we have Japanese generation to well-mannered, then we have to do it. If we have to do it, we have to do it. It's not at all a problem. If we have to do it, we have to do it. If we have to do business transactions, love affairs, we have to discuss it with any personal issues. Plus, we have to cover it. Open. We have to do it. We have to do it. That is the plus point. They respect others' privacy. They do not have the habit of standing and listening to what the person is speaking. They do not, uh, you know, interfere in others' affairs. They just pass by without listening. So, though there is no privacy, there is privacy. Though there is no uh, rule, they can still speak without any fear because Japanese respect others' privacy. They don't listen. So, this point is not held. Booth is not held. They are well mannered. Yeah, so, if you are not able to do it, you will be able to do it. You will, of course, immediately notice their mania for bowing. So, first, elephant booth, but your mother booth, he spoke about Japanese manners, their privacy, everything. Moving on now, he is going to talk about one more aspect, one more mannerism of Japanese, that is the mania of bowing. So, in general, when we meet, we shake hands, right? So, here in Japan, they have this habit of bowing down. They bow down, that's to show respect. That's how they greet. So, they have the mania, they are so obsessed. Everybody keeps going to everybody else with a ceremonial solemnity, with a very dignified manner. Everyone in Japan have this habit. They go to one another and that too ceremonious, polite, dignified and they go very naturally and uniquely. Like when they go down, it is very natural. They do it effortlessly and gracefully. Tumba graceful lagi. Yeno effort hai ila anas tu chana ke oru bow maat hai. Obra nabi ta ta ta. Bowing is neither less nor more silly than shaking hands or kissing on the cheek. Shaking hands and kissing on the cheek. These are the two different mannerisms. Two different ways of greeting people. Ke lo kush hand shake maat ta re. Ke lo kro the kiss on the cheeks. But in Japan, you know, they bow down and they do it, do it very gracefully. Moving on, but you go too deeply or not deeply enough. You go to the wrong man at the wrong time. You do not clasp your hands in front of you, which is bad, or you do, which is worse. So, he is saying, after some time, you, you will start to go yourself. But, uh, you go to the wrong person at the wrong time. Even going backward, back in Amaskar Sundu, after that, you have to go deep, you have to go deep, you have to go deep, and then you have to go wrong person. So, when you go very deeply, you do it from the heart. You know that you have met a right person. But if you do not go deeply enough, which means you have met a wrong person, man at the wrong time. You will discover that the Japanese have a complicated hierarchy in bowing. Hierarchy, shreni, kela gita mele. E shreni eno, aur obrana greet maad be karu, idrano aurani ayyaki ida. A ayyaki ena paamdam, who goes to who? How deeply and for how long? One of the American states had an early chapter of the law which laid down that if two was met at an intersection, neither was to move before the other had gone. So, in Japan, there is an hierarchy. This hierarchy is who go to who. Yaadake yaro talabaki namaskar is boku to. Yeshto deepaki yaro talabaki namaskar is boku to. Even on the example, in America, there was a traffic rule. 
ಒಂದು ಇಂಟರ್ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಕ್ರಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಒಂದು ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ ಹೋಗೋರಿಗೂ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ ಹೋಗೋ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಎರಡು ಅಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲೀವ್ ಒಂದು ಮೂವ್ ಆಗದೇ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಮೂವ್ ಆಗೋದೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಜಪಾನ್ ಸ್ಮಾನರ್ಸ್ ಹೇಗೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಒಬ್ಬರು ಗೋ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ರು ಗೋ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದು ಎಷ್ಟು ಲಾಂಗ್ ರೂಟ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಯಾರು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಬ್ಬರು ಮೂವ್ ಆಗದೇ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ಬ ಮೂವ್ ಆಗೋದೇ ಇಲ್ಲ a little complicated to us the manage it without difficulty it is a little complicated to us it look it looks artificial when you go down but japanese they do it effortlessly they do it very naturally even the smallest difference in rank standing age social position will be subtly reflected in that split second one man's bow is shorter than the others a bow illa adra mele avu social ranking avu manner avu age avu society ya position idare idella nu tilkolakke to know about the entire family background or the richness the societal position one bow is enough in many cases there are clear cut differences the basic rules ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಇವರು ನಾವು ತಲೆಬಾಗಿ ನಮಸ್ಕರಿಸ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ನೀವು ತುಂಬ ತಲೆಬಾಗಿ ತುಂಬ ಹೊತ್ತು ಕೆಳಗೆ ಬೇಕಿದ್ರೆ ಅದ್ರ ಅರ್ಥ ಏನು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದೆ ಇರೋ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅ ರಿಚ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಇದೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾನ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಲೀವ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಈ ಒಂದು ಗೋನೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲದನ್ನು ಹೇಳತ್ತೆ ಆ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೇಳತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಸ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿಯಲ್ಲೂ ಒಂದು ಐರಾಕಿ ಇದೆ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ರೂಲ್ ಇದೆ ಹೂ ಶುಡ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಹೂ ಸೊ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಇರೋ ಈ ರೂಲ್ಸ್ ಏನು ದ ವೈಫ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಯಂಗರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ದ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಗೋ to all brothers of what ever age so this is the rules that are inside the family e bo one tradition idiyala adralli iru rules family rules this is very uh, normal natural uh, you know we live in a male privileged society patriarchal society so even in japan uh, in general wife goes to ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಹೆಂಡತಿ ಗಂಡನ ಮುಂದೆ ತಲೆ ಬಾಗಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಲೈಕ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಫಾದರ್ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಅಪ್ಪನ ಮುಂದೆ ಯಂಗರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಗೋ ಟು ಯರ್ಡರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಡಸನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ವೆದರ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಒನ್ ಆರ್ ಯಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇಟ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆಪಲ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಇಟ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ men are respected even inside the families uh, wife going down to husband um, younger brother to younger brother uh, children to father and sisters to all their brothers they go down so this is the basic rules inside the family i saw he is carrying his pine style on their mother's back so then he speaks about how the mothers carry their child they carry him on their back whenever mother goes baby go to somewhat condescendingly from his majestic height so in common they carry their babies on their back on their shoulder so when the mother goes down the baby also automatically goes comes down in from his majestic height he will be on the shoulder so his height will be a little longer ಒಂದು ತಾಯಿ ಮಗುನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಬೆಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಮಗು ಹೈಟ್ ಆಲ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಹೈಟ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ತಾಯಿ ಬಗ್ಗದಾಗ ಮಗುನೂ ಬಗ್ಗತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೇ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಜಪಾನ್ ದೇ ಗೋ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಸೊ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ರಿಮೇನಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ನೆಕ್